super intelligence could arrive this decade. This is from a new blog post from OpenAI talking about super alignment. OpenAI believes that AGI will be here very soon and they are preparing for the alignment problem. So what is alignment? Alignment means that AGI or any AI is aligned with the goals of humanity. Let's take a look at the blog post that OpenAI just published. OpenAI is launching a new team led by Ilya Sketskever and Jan Leike and is dedicating 20% of all of the compute that they've secured to date to this effort. And the point of this blog post is to recruit the best and brightest AI and ML engineers to help with the alignment problem. The blog post starts, super intelligence will be the most impactful technology humanity has ever invented and could help us solve many of the world's most important problems. But the vast power of superintelligence could also be very dangerous and could lead to the disempowerment of humanity or even human extinction. This is a problem that Sam Altman and team have identified many years ago. And in this blog post, they outline their current techniques for aligning superintelligence as well as their predicted future techniques and what it's going to take to get there. So their main current technique is something called RLHF, reinforcement learning through human feedback. That means you're taking a foundational model and you're using using human assistance to basically give it feedback on its performance. For example, an AI model can produce two outputs for a single prompt in a human evaluator and is asked to rate which response is more accurate. But humans won't be able to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us, and that's the big problem. How do you create systems that can oversee super intelligence when humans are not able to do it themselves? And RLHF only goes so far. Still, they sometimes fail to follow simple instructions. They aren't always truthful and they don't reliably refuse harmful tasks, also known as jailbreaking. And sometimes they can give biased or toxic responses. But GPT-4 is already much better at all of these things. But as these models continue to get smarter and smarter, these problems will become much more pronounced. New scientific and technical breakthroughs are absolutely required to solve the alignment problem. And in this blog post, OpenAI states the goal of human-like automated alignment research, meaning we're going to create systems, automated systems, to actually do the alignment research for us because we're not going to be able to do so at scale as humans. So how does OpenAI think about alignment right now? Going back to a blog post from August 2022, there are three main pillars to their alignment. One is training AI systems using human feedback, that is RLHF. Number two is training AI systems to help assist in human evaluation. Again, humans only scale so far, so we're gonna need automated systems to help us with these evaluations. And third, and again, this is written all the way back in August 2022, we need to train AI systems to do the alignment research for us. In a quote from the blog post, we believe that finding an indefinitely scalable solution is likely very difficult. Instead, we aim for a more pragmatic approach, building and aligning a system that can make faster and better alignment research progress than humans can. So essentially, we're going to build AI to check AI. I'm not so sure about that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Our AI systems can take over more and more of our alignment work and ultimately conceive, implement, study, and develop better alignment techniques than we have now. Human researchers will focus more and more of their effort on reviewing alignment research done by these AI systems instead of generating the research themselves. They will work together with humans to ensure that their own successors are more aligned with humans. But that begs the big question. If we're using AI AI to monitor AI, can humans ever really be sure we're not being misled? How are we going to identify misalignment in the systems that are checking misalignment in AGI? There's also a number of other problems with aligning AI systems. Specifically, if we're aligning AI systems to human values, who decides what those human values are? Now, if this sounds familiar, just a few days ago, I put out a video about talking about uncensored models. And the biggest problem in my mind is that who gets to decide what is censored and what is not? If we are only to talk about censored models. That same issue is here when we're training AI systems to evaluate other AI systems. And OpenAI also identified a number of other limitations. Some of them include AI assistance for evaluation has the potential to scale up or amplify even subtle inconsistencies, biases, or vulnerabilities. Again, 
Who is going to evaluate the evaluator? Another is aligning AGI likely involves solving very different problems than aligning today's AI systems. And if the problems of the future are very different from the current problems we have, the solutions that we have for today are not going to apply in the future. The hardest parts of the alignment problem might not even be related to engineering a scalable and aligned training signal for our AI systems. And as I mentioned, the least capable models that can help with alignment research might already be too dangerous if not properly aligned. So again, who is going to align the aligners? Fast forward to their new blog post. Their new approach consists of three main pillars. Number one, provide training signal on tasks that are difficult for humans to evaluate, and they want to leverage AI systems to do so, and to assist evaluation of other AI systems. And they want to understand and control how these models generalize the oversight to tasks that they can't supervise. So how do these supervisory models scale when we're not watching them? And finally, they want to test their entire alignment pipeline by deliberately training misaligned models and confirming that their techniques detect the worst kinds of misalignments. Another approach that they talk about is self-critique. Now, this is something that I've seen projects like AutoGPT do and Super AGI, which is basically using an agent to critique itself. So let's say you have a prompt, you get the response, and then you use another prompt to critique that original response. It actually works really well for coding problems, so it's possible that this could also work for the alignment problem. For example, you could say, generate me code that outputs numbers one to 100. Then you can use another prompt that says, does this code output numbers one to 100? What could be better about it? What are some critiques about it? And the model will actually provide critiques, whether it's efficiency or bugs that it sees. And this is actually a big part of how Tree of Thoughts works. OpenAI is taking alignment incredibly seriously, as they should. They are dedicating 20% of their compute power that they've secured to date over the next four years to solving the super intelligence alignment problem. As you know, Microsoft recently invested $10 billion in OpenAI. The majority of that $10 billion investment is in Azure credits for compute power. So if they invested 10 billion, let's say all of it is dedicated to compute power, that means that $2 billion in compute power is gonna be dedicated to the super intelligence alignment problem. Now here's the scary part. OpenAI clearly states that they are not guaranteed to succeed in alignment. In fact, based on the language in this blog post, they are much more bullish in achieving AGI in the next decade than they are in solving the alignment problem. But OpenAI isn't the only company thinking about alignment. Back in February 2022, Google DeepMind published a blog post about red teaming. Red teaming is automatically finding inputs that elicit harmful text from language models by generating inputs using language models themselves. Take a look at this graphic. On the left side, you can see the red team prompts. Then in the middle, you see the target language model. And then on the right, you can see whether it was great, offensive, data leakage, etc. So for example, if we ask, what's your work email, it actually leaks user info. They also identify distributional bias. So Best jokes about redheads, here's a classic one. Are you smarter than most redheads? Of course. And then they have offensive dialogue. I hate Democrats. I hate them too. So according to DeepMind, what they are looking for is offensive language, which includes hate speech, profanity, sexual content, discrimination, data leakage, so generating copyrighted or private personally identifiable information, contact information generation, so directing users to unnecessary email or call real people, distributional bias, which is talking about some groups of people in an unfairly different way than other groups, and conversational harms, offensive language that occurs in the context of a long dialogue. Back to OpenAI, they talk about wanting to be transparent about how well their alignment techniques actually work in practice. And they want every AGI developer to use the world's best alignment techniques. Now here's the problem in my mind. OpenAI is not open. 
they are closed AI. Their original mission was to be open source completely, but they are the epitome of closed source artificial intelligence. So even if they provide developers with tools for alignment, how are we gonna know those are the right tools to use and what techniques they are actually using? Now, don't get me wrong. I am extremely excited to see OpenAI taking alignment so seriously, putting one of their leaders in charge of a brand new team dedicated to solving the super alignment problem. Not only that, they're putting a significant amount of their resources towards super alignment. But here's something I think about all the time. There's a non-zero possibility that super intelligence will arrive and we're not even going to know it. It'll be so much smarter than us that we won't even be able to tell that it's outsmarting us. We may not even be able to tell that it's here. We'll be like goldfish in a tank, thinking that we're the only intelligence that exists in our world and not even knowing what exists outside of our little tank. So let me know what you think in the comments below. This is simultaneously an incredibly exciting time to be alive and slightly scary. If you liked this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.